Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sorrental Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we'll be talking about nuclear reactors, guys. So put down today's title, it's going to be Nuclear Reactors. Before we get going, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button to keep my channel going and keep my content as free as possible. Right, so let's get straight into it. Okay, so before we get going, guys, let's have a quick recap on how nuclear reactors work. So we hopefully have an idea that nuclear reactors work in the same way as other power stations. So as you can see, we have the nuclear reactor at the bottom on the left hand side over here. And we know that somehow it's going to be connected to the water. It's going to heat up that water. That water will then turn into steam. So here's my steam from the water. Let's put it as steam. That steam will then travel through and then the steam will push through the turbine. So that remember the turbine is going to spin. So the steam will push through the turbine and therefore the turbine will then spin. The turbine is connected to the generator and inside the generator it will turn the magnets inside and electricity will be produced. So look, electricity is then produced over here. Wonderful, so electricity comes out over here. Then that is then connected to a substation and then runs along a national grid all the way into your house. So that's a basic principle behind nuclear reactors. But no one actually explains uh, this bit over here. What exactly is happening in the nuclear reactor? Well, today we're going to discuss it. Today we're going to discuss it. So let's get straight into it with the following diagram. Okay, so what exactly is happening in the nuclear reactor? Well, there are many parts of it, so we're going to discuss them bit by bit. First of all, we have these giant solid chunks. Yes, these solid chunks over here. These are going to be called fuel rods. And as you can see, they're spaced from one another. So this is called a fuel rod. Let's label that. So this is a fuel rod. And obviously inside the fuel rod contains the fuel. What is the fuel? Well, each one of them is a uranium nucleus. So that's uranium over here. We'll put a key over here. So each of these reds one represents uranium nucleus. Okay, obviously because that's the fuel that we're going to be using over here. Those are the fuel rods over here. So how does the whole process work? So first of all, you've got to start the process. So you're going to cause the nuclear reactions to occur. In the previous video, we talked about how you'd make that happen. You simply have to fire some neutrons into it. So let's say I fired a neutron from here. Here's my neutron. So green represents a neutron over here. Let's say we fired it into the uranium nucleus. We fire it into this one over here. Well, hopefully we can remember that when the neutron goes into the uranium nucleus, it will then split and it will release free neutrons. So three more neutrons come out over here. So that one, let's draw one, let's draw another one, two, and let's say this one over here. And then obviously those neutrons will then go into other uranium nucleuses, like this one over here. This one will split. I'll just color it in. So this one splits. Then the next one is split as well, and obviously energy is released, and energy is released from this one as well. And obviously this neutron then goes into, maybe it continues its path, and it enters another uranium over here, causing this one to split. So this one splits as well, releasing free neutrons again and again. So look, a chain reaction is occurring. So neutrons are going to be released each time. This one might hit this one over here, which causes this one to split as well. So every time it splits, obviously energy is going to be released because it will trigger a chain reaction right now. So obviously we will get a chain reaction from the initial neutron entering one of the uranium nuclei. Okay, so we've got our fission reactions occurring. So now loads of reactions are occurring. Well, in the nuclear reactor, we may need to control the rate of the reaction. So the key thing is this. If the reaction is occurring at a rapid rate, there might be too much energy being produced. So simply, you've got to reduce the rate of the reaction. So we're going to therefore reduce the rate of the reaction. In a nuclear reactor, what they have is the following. They have these giant rods over here. So I'm going to put some rods over here. So this, there we go. Imagine that as a metal bar and it has three rods uh, poking down. Right, these are going to be called the control rods. So these are the control rods right now. Okay, so these are the control rods over here. Right, so you can guess what we're going to do. If you want to reduce the rate of the reaction, all you simply do is you take those control rods and you insert them in between the fuel rods. You take those control rods and as you insert them in between the fuel rods, guess what's going to happen? Well, look, as you can see, 
as we have inserted the control rods in between the fuel rods. Now look, what's actually happened to the neutrons which were released from the fission? Well look, they are blocked off, so they can't go into other uranium nuclei, and therefore you have reduced the rate of fission. And that's the key thing, you insert the fuel rods in between the uranium fuel rods, and obviously you have now blocked off those neutrons, and therefore you have reduced the rate of fission. So the control rods are used to absorb the excess neutrons to reduce the rate of the reaction. Let's put that down. Okay, so there you go guys, control rods are inserted to absorb the excess neutrons to reduce the fission reactions guys. So there you go, we insert the control rods. And obviously guys, simple ideas, if the reaction was going too slow, you simply raise the control rods out. And obviously there's more fission taking place now. Okay, so from here guys, there is something else inside our nuclear reactor, and I'm gonna add it to our diagram right now. Okay, so now look guys, as you can see, I've got these purple things now right next to the fuel rods. You're probably thinking, why have I added these next to the fuel rods? Well, these guys are meant to represent the moderator. So these represent the moderator. You're probably thinking, what on earth is a moderator? What on earth is a moderator? Well, think about this. Imagine we have those neutrons flying about, those neutrons which are flying about all over the place. Right, some of them may be moving too fast to be absorbed by the uranium nuclei. So the function of the moderator is to reduce the speed of those neutrons so that they can be easily absorbed by other uranium nuclei. So the function of the moderator is to reduce the speed of those neutrons so that they can be absorbed by other uranium nuclei. Let's put that down as well. There we go, guys. So the moderator reduces the speed of those released neutrons, guys. So it reduces the speed. Think about it. If you imagine that you're playing catch with someone and somebody's throwing the ball really, really fast, obviously it's hard for you to catch. It's the same idea with the nucleus. If the neutron is moving far too fast, obviously you can't actually absorb it for it to decay. It's the same idea. Okay, so now from here, there's only one more thing to do for the nuclear reactor. It's going to be the heat exchanger. So the heat exchanger looks like the following. Okay guys, as you can see the diagram is getting very busy right now. I've got a pipe now running all the way around the bottom and popping out again. The heat exchanger is going to obviously get the heat away from the reactor core. So obviously as the fission takes place, um, it will heat up. But now look, because you're going to, um, that is going to represent the heat guys, the yellow represents the heat. We need to remove that heat, don't we? We need to remove that heat, otherwise the reactor will heat up. So what you do is you have the heat exchanger, which is going to pump in the cold gas and it will take the heat away because obviously the gas heats up and it will exit the reactor. And that is the function of the heat exchanger, guys. The function of the heat exchanger is to transport the heat away from the reactor core. Excellent stuff. OK, so I know there's a lot going on here. We talked about four different things. We talked about the fuel rods, the control rods, the moderator and the heat exchanger, guys. And obviously, make sure you understand it from that diagram. And obviously, don't forget the previous stuff we talked about from nuclear fission. You need to understand the fission process before understanding this concept here. Right, before we go, we're going to have a quick summary of the different parts of a nuclear reactor. Let's have a browse. OK, so as you can see, I've got a table over here. I've got reactor part at the top. And as I've got the reactor part at the top, I've got the fuel rods, oops, there we go, I've got fuel rod, and the function of the fuel rod is to contain the nuclear fuel, uranium or plutonium, which will undergo fission. Next one, I've also got the control rod. The control rod is made of boron, and it's used to absorb the excess neutrons, and you insert them to reduce the rate of fission. And obviously, you remove them if you want to increase it. The moderator is used to slow down the neutrons, so that they can be easily absorbed by the uranium nuclei. And last of all, the heat exchanger to transport heat away from the reactor core, guys. Excellent stuff. Okay, so we're gonna have a quick recap right from the top, guys, so let's do this again. Okay, so today's title was Nuclear Reactors, and the first thing we talked about was the basic principles of a nuclear reactor. We kind of have an idea that nuclear reactors, it's used to heat up water, which turns into steam, which then pushes a turbine, causing it to spin, which is connected to a generator, which then creates electricity, which can be transported towards our house. So we have an idea of how that works, but we don't actually understand how does nuclear reactors actually work here. So then we talked about the following diagram. 
Okay, so in this diagram over here, we have the fuel rods, one, two, three, four. And as you can see, inside the fuel rods, we have uranium. And as you can see, red represents the uranium. So we start the reaction off by firing a neutron in. We fire the neutron in, it will then cause uranium nuclei to split, releasing excess neutrons. Those neutrons can travel in any direction. Yes, yeah? so they can go into other fuel rods. They can cross the gap and go into other fuel rods. If the reaction is happening too fast, well, simply you can block off those neutrons. And the way you do that is by inserting the control rods in between the fuel rods here, absorbing those excess neutrons. And there we go. That is the control rod. So we talked about the fuel rods and we talked about the control rods. Then we talked about the moderator. The moderator is that pink thing over there. I've just drawn them over here. The function of the moderator is to reduce the speed of the released neutrons because those neutrons are moving too fast to be absorbed so we can reduce the speed of them using the moderator. The moderator is made out of graphite, guys. So the moderator is made out of graphite. And last of all, we have the heat exchanger. The heat exchanger is obviously to transport the heat away from the nuclear reactor. We have cold gas going in and hot gas going out. The heat exchanger is responsible for taking that heat away from the reactor core, guys. And last of all, guys, I had the following. I had the nuclear reactor part over here and I had the function, and we just summarized them all once again. But we're not going to do that right now, I've done it a couple of times a day. And that's it for another session of Sir Razzle Dazzle Physics. Make sure you hit the like, subscribe button to keep my channel going. Good luck in your studies. And what do physicists have for dinner? Fusion chips. Goodbye.